What's up guys and welcome to my video. This video is all about 4K. So what is 4K, why should you care and when can you get it? Well the term 4K simply means a resolution that is four times higher than that of Full HD which is 1080p. 4096 by 2160 is the real resolution of what's known as 4K Cinema HD. This is the official term for 4K. But the common format that we know as 4K is actually 3840 by 2160 and this is simply known as UHD which means Ultra HD. Now 4K isn't actually really anything new. Cinema goers have been enjoying 4K for a while, they just haven't really noticed. These are the top end projectors and it's on such a big screen that you may either not notice or you just simply don't think about it. And that means that loads of films have been recorded in the 4K format for a long time. But at the moment we don't really have much of a content delivery system, but more on that a bit later. Now if you want 4K or Ultra HD in the home, you've had a few options for a couple of years. However, these have always been really expensive, or some of them are a little bit cheaper, but don't offer a proper 60Hz refresh rate, and so aren't really any good to anyone. However, 2014 really is the year that things are starting to kick off in the 4K world. TVs are starting to become affordable and at sizes that most people will actually be able to put in their homes comfortably and refresh rates are actually becoming the proper 60Hz refresh rate. So everyone's really getting what they want. And while they still might be out of reach for most people, they are now starting to enter the common market for high-end consumer electronics. Now obviously the big thing about 4K is the fact that the resolution makes everything so much sharper. That is by far the biggest benefit of it. But if you're a PC gamer, it means you need less anti-aliasing because you just simply don't really need it anymore because you don't have the problem with not having enough pixels where you get a straight line, if you don't have enough little boxes, things become jaggy. But if you've got the pixels, then you don't actually need the NTA listing there in the first place. And of course you get things like sharper text as well. Now one of the other big advantages to having a 4K screen is that you could technically have it twice as big as you did before and it will still have the same pixel density. This means that you can have a bigger screen or you can have the same size screen and sit nearer to it. But the biggest drawback is that because you need four times as much detail, it takes up more space on a disc and you need more power to actually run it in the first place. This means that every single aspect of your system must be 4K ready. From your screen, to your cables, to your graphics card, whatever, it all needs to be able to support 4K. Now in order to view 4K, you're gonna need some 4K content. But the problem is that content delivery system just isn't really here at the moment. The main things are Netflix and YouTube, both of them do have 4K content. YouTube and Netflix, obviously, they don't have that much content because it is so new. But the problem is, traditionally, we'd be looking at using something like a Blu-ray disc to deliver the 4K image. But at the moment, there is no such format and there may not ever be. We have to wait and see for that. So there's no 4K films on discs, at least at the moment. Outside of 4K content, though, there is 4K content creation. And I'm not talking about making stuff in 4K, I'm talking about using the 4K to make content. So if this is video editing or image editing or anything like that where you're working with stuff on screen, so it could be 3D applications, 2D applications, anything, then you're going to be benefiting from all those extra pixels. You're going to be able to have proper 1080p streams at the top right screen next to it, and you're still going to have loads of room to work. Stuff like image editing as well, you can see more detail, and that's really what it's about, seeing more detail from your image. But what if you want to play video games in 4K? Well, you're going to need a ridiculously powerful machine, and no, I'm not talking about an Xbox One or a PS4. I'm talking about a proper SLI, really, set up on your PC, so multiple graphics cards working together to produce a massive, massive image. But what if you want to play games in 4K? Well, you're going to need a very powerful machine. An Xbox One, PS4? Absolutely not. I'm talking about a really serious machine that has one or two graphics cards in it that goes up to three gigabytes or maybe four gigabytes of memory. So, should you invest in a 4K gaming setup? Well, to game efficiently at settings that you'll be happy at, you're going to need a ridiculously powerful machine. Couple that with the monitor and you are talking literally about £2,000, £3,000 or of course about £3,000-ish. It is ridiculously expensive and it's only reserved for the people that has the largest amount of disposable income. So because 4K gaming is so extreme and so expensive and because 4K content is really rare, the only real point in having 4K at the moment that makes sense is for content creators because they're going to be able to use all those extra pixels regardless. 4K is kicking off, but as always, the early adopters pay the price. 
Literally, they pay the price, and of course they pay the price through other things like lack of content and support. But having said that, it is definitely becoming affordable, and definitely in a couple of years' time we will all be on 4K TVs and 4K monitors. Well, maybe not a couple, maybe a few more than that, but they are definitely going the right way. So what if you do want to get into 4K? Well, firstly, you're going to need a screen that supports 4K at 60Hz. None of that 30Hz stuff, it's going to ruin your eyes, it's going to just be pretty unusable and you're not going to have a very enjoyable experience. No point in taping one step forward and two steps back, waste of time. When you're buying a 4K screen, make sure it has either HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPort 1.2, or ideally both, as these are needed to get the 60Hz refresh rate from your 4K graphics card. At the moment, graphics cards don't support HDMI 2.0, but I bet that will change very soon. So that pretty much wraps it up. It's just a couple of numbers that are going up, and people are getting excited about it. But of course this means that the image quality is going to be so much better, and you're going to be able to have a larger screen experience, and it's going to become a more immersive experience. So, when are you going to be getting into 4K? Leave your comments below. Do you want to get into 4K gaming? Do you not really care? Are you happy with 1080p? What do you think? One question I do want to know, what do you think is more useful? A 4K monitor or a 4K TV? Both are going to be quite different. Obviously one is all about getting it big and being able to see so much. The other one is about having all the tiny little details being really fine and sharp. Let me know what's more important to you. If you thought this video was useful and you thought that the cat that kind of disappeared halfway through the video helped you in some way, leave a like. If you thought I hate cats, leave a dislike. Or, you know, if you don't like the video, I suppose you could leave a dislike as well. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe, of course, to PC Centric for more videos like this. And also on Steam, check out the PC Centric Gaming Group. It's under community, just give it a search for that, to find other gamers like yourself and to chat with me if there's any questions. So once again, thank you very much, guys, and I will see you next time.